Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. Today we're going to visit the tail of the Whistling Bentley. These cars are very beautiful and this one's actually short and girthy, kind of like the, the yacht I just got. Big, tall, short, and girthy. Anyways, let's get started and find out what is going on with this beautiful Bentley. Whistling Bentley? What's this all about? Yeah, it makes a whistling noise. Isn't this a beautiful car though? It is. I thought you bought it for me. No, it's not it's bought not for, for you. No. We're not reached that level yet. We start to finish our yacht. That's true. That's a big fun project. Yeah. So, so what's wrong with this? It makes a horrible whistling noise at idle. We're going to see if the viewers can figure out what the noise is. Awesome. And then I'm going to show them how I found out what it is. Okay. Sounds cool. Okay. This is a 2014 Bentley GTC Continental. It has the twin turbo Audi 4 liter V8. And luckily for the owner, John Riley, it's an Audi engine, so we can use Audi parts and save a little bit of money. If you're interested in renting this really awesome Bentley, you can get a hold of John Riley on Turo. You can download the Turo app. If you're in the Wichita area, you're on business, or you don't want to drive a Honda Accord or a Ford Fusion to your business meeting, and you want to look the part, this is the guy to get a hold of. He's got a Porsche Panamera Turbo. He's got another Bentley Continental Super Sports. He's got this GTC here. He's got a CL63 AMG. The list goes on. There's a whole lot of cars, and we service them all here for him. Now let's get to business. John was driving his car, and he hears this whistling noise, and he's like, what in the world is that? I'm going to start the engine and let you guys hear it. Once it settles down to an idle, you'll hear it, and then we're going to discover what it is. You guys hear it whistling? It's whistling a song for you. Come on, car wizards, save their ears. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. And I, if I was the owner of this car, I definitely wouldn't want to drive such a prestigious car and go down the road sounding like a hoopty. It definitely is not a hoopty. So I'm going to play the little game that I usually play with you guys. Just by hearing that noise, if you were standing by this car, walking past it, and you heard that noise. Off the top of your head, in the comments, you could list what do you think is wrong with this car. So, number one, is it a pulley on the serpentine belt system making the noise? Number two, is one of the turbos going out and making a really horrible, horrible noise? Or number three, is it a vacuum issue? I'll let you guys take a few minutes to decide. Okay, so I'm going to start the engine back up and we're going to open the, the bonnet, as they would say on a Bentley. And I'm going to show you guys how I found out what was wrong. You might want to turn your volume down now because we're going to do the horrible, nasty whistling noise again. In three, two, one. I have one of the air filter boxes out because I was trying to figure out where it's coming from. That is an annoying, annoying noise. You could easily be thinking it's a belt or something else. But we're going to find out what it is. I know since it's an Audi or Volkswagen engine, it's very likely going to be a vacuum issue. Let's find out. Let's pull the dipstick. Listen to that hissing noise. This engine should never be pulling that much vacuum through the crankcase. It's pulling so much vacuum that I had to add some oil to this. It was low on oil when it came in. It's literally drinking the oil. Also, that noise you hear is from the strong vacuum pulling air past little seals here and there. It's just so loud. Let's put the dipstick back in. There's our noise again. Listen to it, still relieving the vacuum. The noise I've already discovered it doesn't need to be repaired. The issue needs to be repaired that's causing the noise. It's 
like I said, it's pulling vacuum past seals and things, and it's making almost like a reed on a clarinet or something. It's making that noise. So we don't need to fix the noise, we need to fix the issue that's causing the noise. Number one, I, I listed it could be a pulley on a serpentine belt. That would never change the noise because I pulled the dipstick. So no, it's not a serpentine belt. Anything to do with a serpentine belt. Is it a turbo going out making a horrible squalling noise? No, because a turbo wouldn't care if I pulled the dipstick and changed the vacuum on it. I have worked on so many Volkswagen products, it would be Audi, Volkswagen, Bentley, or whatever, what have you. They have a lot of crankcase ventilation problems, a little diaphragm goes bad. That was the first thing I thought of when I opened the hood. I said, this is an Audi Volkswagen product. I guarantee you it's something to do with the vacuum going on, and definitely it was. There should be about one inch of vacuum or so on the crankcase to pull crankcase vapors out. This one has full-blown engine vacuum, 18 inches and that's way, way too high. So where is the PCV valve on here? How do you know that that is the problem? Let me grab my, I call them bunny ears, but it's a stethoscope. This is a homemade tool that I made. You could get a cheap doctor's stethoscope on Amazon and you just cut the end off. It's like a straw. I was able to use this while it was running and I isolated that horrible whistling noise over on the rear of the engine where there's a seal, an oil seal, and it's actually pulling air, or vacuum's pulling air into it. The next thing I did, and we're going to show you where the PCV valve is at, and when you see where it's at, you'll see why this is a $1,500 job. It pays six hours to do this job, and it's buried pretty deep. Let me show you where it's at, and then I'll show you how I knew that that's what it was. This is the Audi. 4 liter twin turbo V8. And what's really cool about these engines is that the exhaust manifolds are not on the outside of the engine. They're in the V of the engine, directly into the turbos. And the turbos sit in the middle of the engine. The intake manifold is actually where you would normally think an exhaust manifold would be. It's completely backwards. The thing that stinks about this is that underneath these turbos, is a big black box down there, and that is the PCV, or the oil separator, crankcase ventilation box. You can see that down there, that it's going to be very hard to get to. Quite a lot of all this stuff has to come apart to get to it, and also go all the way back together. What I did was, with my stethoscope, while the engine was running, I stuck this down right on top of that oil separator box, and I could hear air rushing so fast through there. It was like a tornado. You could hear air just rushing through the thing. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be that way. So I knew that is the problem. Luckily for John, this is an Audi engine. It's a German design motor inside of an English styled car. Based on that fact, I can order the oil separator, crankcase vent, whatever you call it, box for a 2014 Audi A8 through Whirlpack, which I use to get all my parts. That's going to save him some money that way, not getting it through an official Bentley supplier. Now, you say, why $1,500? Why is it going to be so high? Cars like this Audi here, the blue, blue Audi, we're at $100 an hour on that. This is going to be much, much more. If I'm going to take the risk to work on a car that has parts that are $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, it's going to pay a lot more. You're also paying for the experience. You're paying for someone who knows how to find the problem. I found the problem very fast. In fact, the owner, John, when I sent some videos and some pictures, just like I do with all of my customers, he was like, wow, that was fast. I just dropped off the car an hour ago. You've already isolated the problem and ready to attack. It's like, that won't happen with a three-year mechanic. It's going to have to be someone 20 years or more. So we found out what was wrong. When you add six hours of labor, and the part, and he wants air filters, and he wants a belt, and you start tacking all this stuff together on one of these cars, not on one of those cars, but on one of these cars, the price escalates really fast. If you take this to a dealership, a Bentley dealership, your hourly rate will be over $200 an hour. So as opposed to taking this to the dealership to get work done, the prices here are going to be substantially less going to save him some money. He's very happy with the price. He's like, yeah, go for it, man. Do it. This is great. 
Now, there would be some people that would see the price of this and go, oh my God, he's ripping me off. No. This is what it takes to work on a Bentley, a Mercedes, a Ferrari. It's just the way it is, guys. I don't have a lift available today, but we'll take a look at the car and let you guys see the interior and take a look around it. We have had this car in the shop a few times. We've done videos on it before. You can check in the past. But some of you haven't seen this car yet. Let's take a look around it. This car is in very, very good shape. I could definitely, like Mrs. Wizard said she would like to have a car like this, I definitely could cruise in a car like this. In case some of you haven't seen a car of this stature, even Mercedes and other models have this, but it has soft closed doors. When you get out of this car and you've got your nice suit on, you don't get out and go, you don't slam the door like that. You can, it doesn't hurt anything. They designed it to be able to close the door that way if you want to, but you don't have to. You can just lean it against the latch and it closes itself. It's called soft closed doors. Let's see that again. That's it. I always cringe when I see someone get out of one of these cars who's never been around, someone who rents a car like this and they BAM! It's like, oh man, you don't have to do that, guy. So, this has 50,000 miles on it. It's in very, very good shape. Let's take a look at the interior. Open the door for you, Mrs. Wizard. Well, thank you, sir. Hey, Car Wizard, I can smell the leather before I even Oh, get yes, this is intoxicating for me. It is. Bentleys, to me, these Continentals are probably the best interiors in the industry. That's my personal opinion. It's got a leather headliner, leather pillars, leather dash, leather everything. It's just leather, leather, and leather everywhere. Look at these beautiful opera pools. You can open and close the vents, solid metal. This doesn't have wood trim in it like you would think in most of these models in the early years. This has piano black or kind of an ebony look to it. That's more of a modern, up-to-date style. It really looks nice. Metal shifter. Heavy metal. You definitely get what you pay for in these vehicles, at least I think so. Diamond stitch seats, heated and cooled, with a vent right there in the seat to blow on you. That is really, really cool. It does have back seats. It's a, it's a two-door, but it does have, if you wanted to carry some children or smaller people, they would fit in the back just fine. Right now, it's got this little wind, windscreen in the back. I'm not going to take it all apart, but even the back seats look like royalty-style seats. They're very, very nice. Another mark of a well-made car to me is when you open the glove box and it doesn't go kapong and just fall open. It gingerly, nicely opens. That's very nice. Very nice feature. There's a paperwork and stuff in there, but I just wanted to show everything about this is soft close. You don't slam and bang and drop and make all kind of noises with these cars. It's very gingerly done. So, and I like that. I really like that about a car. Let's go around the back and look at the back. These wheels, they're not 19s, they're not 20s, they're 21s. Big, big wheels on this car, and they look amazing. I love the styling. The red B in the middle, the red emblem, is beautiful. Let's take a look at the, the back of the car. When you're driving around town and you come up behind this car, you know it's not a Hyundai Genesis. It's not a Mercury or a Ford. You know that this is a Bentley. It's, it's beautifully styled. It looks almost like a yacht. Wouldn't you say, Mrs. Wizards? Yacht okay, styling. It does. Very, very nice. I've actually had one of these in the shop before, and so once we wanted to see what the trunk looked like, and I said, well, open the trunk. It was a trick. And he's doing all kinds of things, and he's like, I, I don't know. How do you open this? Do you have to have the key fob? I said, no, push the B. He said, what? I said, push the B. He goes, oh, okay. Here's our handy dandy umbrellas and the different things he has in there for his customers. Has nice opera lighting in the back. Has nice little 
turns chrome accented to access panels and things in the back. It's not, you can tell it's not a cheap car. And again, when you're done, you don't slam the trunk like a Honda Accord. You push the button. One thing I really also like about this is the shoulders in the back. It's very high shouldered and blocky. Again, kind of like a yacht. And as we come back around to the front, you can see the beautiful side over there. There's not really much to see as far as looking for rust or dents or anything. This car is immaculate. And again, the front, you can definitely tell it is a Bentley. You pretty much know that it's, it is not a Cadillac. Some people would scoff at Bentley and Rolls-Royce using German engines. Rolls-Royce has BMW engines in it. I actually have a customer who's inquiring about a 2012 Ghost. It has a BMW V12 in it. You say, oh, it's not a Rolls-Royce engine. I'm glad about that. This has an Audi engine. The Super Sports that he owns also has an Audi W12 engine. I think that's wonderful. Just like Mrs. Wizard's Land Rover Discovery Sport has a Ford EcoBoost 2.0. When her water pump recently went out in a video that we did a while back, I ordered a water pump for Ford Escape and saved tons of money. I don't have to go to the Land Rover dealer and get parts. I really love that. Jean-Claude Van Damme's Bentley Azure that's on the lift right there. We're just finishing it up and bleeding out the brake system. To get down to the brake pumps was very, very hard. It wasn't I mean, you think Audi engines are hard to work on. No, those engines can be very trying, very, very aggravating to work on. They got hoses and pipes and pipes on top of pipes and hoses, and it's really a pain. This is a cakewalk compared to that. So the idea of using pre-made engines from other companies in cars that were an English car and having German engines, I think that's wonderful. I think that's great, especially for someone who works on their own cars. You can just go on Parts Geek or wherever your favorite parts supplier is. Look up an Audi and look up a BMW and order parts. One last instance of that, I'll try, try to drive that home for you. Tyler's Rolls Royce Phantom that he had, the big Barney, the big purple guy, it had a BMW V12. The coolant pipe in the middle went bad. I didn't go to Rolls Royce to get that to repair that leak. It had a coolant leak coming out of a weep hole. I repaired that with parts for 2005 BMW 760 Li. It's identical. Saved Hoovy lots of money, lots of money. So that's advantageous. If you're looking for a mechanic, you have one of these cars, make sure you find a mechanic that's knowledgeable of those things. It could save you a lot of money. And that was one of the selling points on Mrs. Wizard's Land Rover Discovery Sport is that I knew if anything goes wrong with the engine, it's Ford Escape parts for the most part. There are some parts on her car that are Land Rover only, but it's really not that bad. And it's a Land Rover through and through. It really is. It's a Land Rover. When you sit inside of it, you know you're not sitting in a CRV. Are you having fun, Junior Mint? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's actually working on the yacht that we just bought. He's starting to pull the motor apart so we can find out what was wrong with that engine that was bad. We're going to do a video on that here pretty soon and you guys will find out what was wrong with that one. Why won't it run? If you're curious what kind of tools I use, check the Amazon affiliates link in the description below. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, I really, really encourage you to do that now. We've got many more cool videos to come and yacht videos. Don't miss those.